dog here with the Olite Bulger Pro R, R for rechargeable. This is a wonderfully compact, bright weapon light at 1350 lumens. Uh, and it has an integrated green laser designator built into it. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's take a look at what you get in the box and let's test this out. All right, we have our box here and nicely designed, very spartan and clean. Uh, but of course that really only appeals to a designer like me. Let's look at what's inside because I'm sure that's appealing to everybody out there. Inside, we find a magnetic charger, USB-A type, and we also have a little pouch with an Allen wrench, uh, some set screws, and oh, this is the Picatinny um, uh, blocking plate uh, or bar adapter. And here is our manual. Definitely read your manual. And we have our Bulger. Pro R. Very nice. It feels solid. It looks well made. Um, you just attach this to your USB charger, wall charger, or what have you, and then oop, clicks on. Perfect. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of a red light indicator here. It's kind of dim uh, in bright daylight, but it does. There is a light to indicate that it is charging in there. So there we go, see green, red. So that means it's charging. All right, but let's test this out real quick. Yeah, pretty bright. Low, yep. You pinch both or press down on both and you get strobe and just one side, keep it pressed down and it's momentary. Now it has the, the controls for whether or not you want the laser on and uh, laser off uh, on the actual uh, bezel itself on the, uh, the front tube of your light. It's a dial and it's set default for light only. So let's, um, enough jabbing, let's go take it outdoors. We're gonna do a drop test, a water test, and we're gonna take a look at how it well it illuminates. So let's go. All right, the, one of the first tests we're gonna do is a comparison size test with some other popular flashlights. This is the Olight Valkyrie PL2. The, this is the Streamlight TLR1 and the Surefire X300. And as you can see, the Boulder shares a lot of physical similarities with the, with the older Valkyrie. Um, the overall dimensions of the body of the uh, flashlight are almost identical. I mean, some differences in terms of its charging port and um, it is a little bit longer. It, has the, it shares the same latching mechanism, uh, but it is, as you can see here, about half an inch longer um, than the Valkyrie, uh, which is about the same length as uh, the Streamlight, but it is just a tad bit shorter than the Surefire, as you can see here in comparison, just about a quarter inch shorter. So this leads to the eternal question, will, the, will this fit on, in my holster? Well. I don't have a definitive answer for you. Um, suffice to say that if uh, your holster uh, fits your weapon and you have one of either of these flashlights, it probably will not fit this longer uh, flashlight. Again, it'll depend on your holster and uh, your weapon. Um, if you uh, happen to know, if you um, have those details, please leave a comment, uh, leave me a comment and let us all know um, which holster this Olight fits on. Let's take a look at how it mounts and its controls. This is a Glock 17, and I just want to point out that there is no cartridge in the chamber and there is no magazine. This has been rendered safe to handle because we always practice uh, firearm safety here on this channel. And I'd also like to point out that this is not a gun modification device or accessory. This is a safety device and you need to be able to have good illumination whenever you use your firearm. And sometimes you, you may need or want to use your firearm either at night uh, in a blackout or if you are a law enforcement or security guard 
or even uh, patrolling and investigating things around your own property, oftentimes lighting is not ideal. So you need to have a flashlight or some other illumin uh, illuminated device to be able to see what you're pointing your weapon at to do that safely. Because you want to be able to identify um, your, your, what you're pointing your gun at uh, and also identify what is behind your intended target to make sure that you are firing, you're using your firearm safely. So this is a safety device. I know I have to stress that out to our reviewers here on YouTube. But anyway, um, this attaches on via this base, which has a Glock sized um, crossbar pre-installed. So obviously this was designed for a Glock. Now this will also fit uh, other firearms, but again, caveat, uh, here is that uh, depends on your firearm. So um, you want to just press down on the latching, the latch here, and to open up the clamp and align the crossbar to the notch on your accessory rail. And it just slips on. And you just lock it in, and it is firmly, firmly attached on here. There is a little bit of flex. Um, you can tighten it up here with the the flathead screwdriver, but there'll always be a little bit of flex with a Glock because it is a polymer frame. Now plastic just flexes a little bit. And that leads to um, an, an issue with the zero here. And now I've tested this out um, with a bore sighter and it is pretty spot on in terms of alignment. But if you had to adjust it, uh, there is a windage and elevation screw on the the weapon light itself, then you adjust that using an Allen wrench, so you can adjust the zero. But with any polymer frame weapon, it's never going to hold zero 100% of the time over time because there's always a little bit of flex when you use it and you mount it, and depending on, on how tightly you hold it, um, the zero, you just can't count on that zero. Now it's different if you have a, a steel frame weapon like a 1911 or a Beretta, or a CZ or whatever. Um, a steel frame weapon is going to, it's just going to be firm enough, so you could conceivably adjust this, foots around with it to get a really super tight zero. But for any polymer frame weapon, I, I really wouldn't spend too much time adjusting that unless it was way off. So I um, also like to point out the controls are very ergonomic. Uh, it is positioned ideally um, in your safe position here uh, off of the trigger. You can easily manipulate it with either, hand, with either finger of either hand, either pressing forward or pressing in with either hand. And if you need to manipulate the strobe control, um, you press on, on both at the same time or pinch with your support hand. Uh, you can also manipulate the control for the laser and the light here, but you generally don't want to be do doing that um, too often. Uh, be mindful of the fact that it's near, very near your muzzle. So that's one of the concerns I would have about manipulating this. Generally, you'd, you'd keep it on one of the three settings all the time anyway. You are basically manipulating, uh, activating the device with your trigger fingers in the rear, which is safe. Olight states that the Boulder R has a max output of 1350 lumens. I let the unit run for a minute in high mode to warm up, and I measured numbers that were 500 lumens brighter than the manufacturer's specs. Now after about two minutes of runtime, I noticed that the numbers started to drop precipitously. The numbers eventually stabilized at what I calculated to be just over 650 lumens. The unit was quite hot to the touch, which leads me to think that this was designed to do this to keep you from burning out the LED. A close look at the manual actually does bear this out. It says it only stays at 1350 lumens for a minute and a half, and then drops to 500 lumens for most of its runtime. Next, I tested the unit in low mode and got a calculated output of 400 lumens. We'll take a look at how bright that is, but I want to take a moment and ask you to please hit that like button if you're getting some good information from this video. And hit that bell icon to be notified when I post my next review. And most importantly, please hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed to this channel. It's free and it encourages me to make more review videos like this. Let's see how well the unit illuminates a doorway. We're in low mode here and I'm going to bring it up to high mode. We see a hot spot about four feet wide and a spill that fills up the entire hallway. Next thing I'm going to turn on the combined laser and light mode. It's a little hard to make out at first with uh, the camera, but with a naked eye I could clearly see the green dot. 
Now I have it on the laser only mode and it was quite bright. Next I tested the unit outdoors. I have it on low power mode and I could clearly make out objects from 15, 60 to 120 feet away. And next I tested in high power mode. I got quite a wider spell. It's rated to illuminate out to 200 meters and I can believe it. And testing the laser, I got a clear sharp point even out to 120 feet away. So it's plenty bright, but how durable is it? So I drop tested it from six feet onto dirt and rocks, twice. It didn't crack the lens or dent the body and all the functions still worked. Next, I tested how well it handles the elements. Uh, I'd like to point out that the unit is only IPX4 rated by the manufacturer, which means that it's splash proof, not waterproof. Yet despite this high pressure hose, all the buttons functioned, all the modes still worked, and I could spot no water, moisture, or fogging behind the lens. So it passed. There you go, the Boulder Pro R. Now, I know Olight has this reputation for aggressive marketing and getting people to basically praise their products unnecessarily. Now, full disclosure, Olight did send this unit out to me for testing and evaluation. And in addition to that, I got this much from them. Well, aside from this, so. Yep, zero, zilcho. I am not sponsored by Olight, so I have no incentive to shill for them. I'm always gonna be brutally honest. In fact, I'm gonna call out the Baldur's key selling point. Now the biggest issue I have about this is that in all its marketing, it touts itself as being a 1350 lumen weapon light. Now granted, it does say in the small print that it is max output and not average output, but still the fact that it only stays at 1350 for one and a half minutes and then for the next 40 minutes is only rated at 500 lumens, that's a little deceptive. Unfortunately, Olight is not the only manufacturer that plays these Lumen Numbers games. That's just marketing for you, and it's just something you need to be aware of. Despite that, I honestly think this is a darn good weapon light, especially a good value for its price. So much so that I'm going to be mounting this on my own personal sidearm. Is it right for you? Well, hopefully this episode gave you some insights onto that, and if you're interested in picking one up, check out my blog, MoondogIndustries.com, for links. And please, don't forget to hit that like button, the notification bell, and the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. And if you want a suggestion for something cool to watch, check out and subscribe to my new channel, Moondog R&D, a channel focused on gadget reviews, photo and video gear, you know, geeky stuff. So keep an eye out for more videos, and thanks again for watching. You be safe out there. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.